the, the most recent project we're working on, which is becoming more exciting, and I'm, I have to be honest, I'm a bit surprised that it's exciting me. We're creating a MOOC, a massive online open course for MITx. And it is a course that it's basically call, it's called Making Science and Engineering Pictures. Can't be more straightforward than that. And the wonderful part about it is I have to really sit down and think about what it is that I want to say, at, you know, basically give, give away all, everything I know. I really do want to do that. I want to just tell people how to do all this stuff. The course is, yes, it's teaching the students and the faculty how to make pictures, but it's also about learning to see. And that's sort of my mission in a way, that it's not just about making pretty pictures. You know, this is one of the problems I run into. People look at some of the images that I've made and they say it's very, they're very beautiful and that's nice. But really, it's about information. There's no reason why you can't con create a compelling image and have, at the same time, the image being highly informational. That's what I really am trying to do, and get the students to do the same. The idea of making an image that is more than good enough is sort of what my mission is about. I have an example that I show the students of one of the researchers' image of a device, which is okay. It's a little out of focus, but just by making a couple of adjustments to when, you, when I took the image, like for example, getting it in focus and putting a piece of paper underneath it and shooting at a different angle, it's about changing your point of view, not just staying with the first view that you imagine. It's moving things around. I mean, we have examples of just moving things around and you see things differently. It's, it's more than good enough. That's really, it, your, your work evolves as you, discover new ideas, why not do the same with the way you make your images? Uh, let it evolve and grab at new ideas and play. It, it's actually fun. <laughs> One thing that's important to consider is the purpose of the picture. That has a lot to do with whether it's good enough. Uh, for example, if you were looking for a cover shot. Let's say your article was accepted, your submission was accepted. I get a lot of these. After the submission is accepted, I get these panicked <laughs> emails. They're asking for a cover, can you help? You know, that kind of thing. Um, the co a cover image is different from a, an image that is in a figure, for example. You want something compelling. It doesn't have to be absolutely telling the whole story. In fact, you can't tell the whole story for a cover. And so it's, it's, a re, it's an education about what kind of image could work for a cover. I've been privileged that I've gotten a lot of journal covers. And uh, in, in the end, it, it's a, it has to do with aesthetics for a cover shot. So that's an approach that you have to consider and have that in your equation. It just can't be a documentary image. Uh, it is difficult when you've been working with something for years, making a decision about what, what's right and what's good and what more you need to uh, include and what you shouldn't include. If you, the problem is you know too much. You've been working in, in the lab and at this maybe for years for all we know. I think that that's the beauty of gathering people together. That's that effort of a collaborative nature is something that we're trying to c 
continue on campus. I don't think you actually can figure it out yourself. I think you've got to ask around and definitely don't ask around just your laboratory. We should be speaking, we, departments should be speaking with each other. But it, it really is a decision, I think, that can't be made by you, the researcher. You know, my hope, by the way, is to create a whole discipline, a, a profession of people like me. There are a lot of young people who write to me all the time asking where can they, where can they create images and how can they do this. And there is, there is no profession, there's no formal training to make images in science and engineering. Uh, someday that might happen. <laughs>